Hi folks and welcome to TK Power Sports. Well, it is springtime here in Ontario and that means it's black fly season, but it also means that it is ATV season and we've got a great comparison in store for you today. That is the brand new Can-Am Outlander XT700 and that right there is the Yamaha Grizzly 700 and we're gonna go out there, take them in the mud, climb the rocks and I'm gonna tell you which one is better. Like I mentioned, this Outlander is brand new from the ground up for this model year. And one of the big changes is with the racks here. They've moved away from a more traditional rack like you have on the Yamaha with the steel crossbars. And they've gone to this setup. So this is standard on every Outlander. You get this front storage bin. It even has a little prop there to hold it up. That's cool. And you can put link accessories down inside of that bin. So that is quite handy. This is sort of the way the industry is going. If you look at modern Polaris models, they have racks more like this too. And this is just one of the ways that kind of shows you Yamaha is a bit stuck in the past. They don't really change their ATVs very often. And this Grizzly has just been soldiering on unchanged for many years now. So we still get the old school rack. Now, yes, you can get accessories for your rack, like this tool holder from Colpin. So I'm not saying it's not quite as useful, but I just think Yamaha needs to update their thinking a little bit. This is more useful every day. And that's there, I think, because that's just the way the industry has always done it. So that's just one spot where you can compare and contrast, but you can see the big kind of just thought process difference. Can-Am is trying to move forward, be cutting edge. Yamaha's more about, hey, it works, let's leave it alone. And you know what, with that in mind, let's go for a ride and feel the difference. Now for the important part, folks. Let's talk about how these machines actually ride. So we'll start here with the Yamaha Grizzly, and we'll start with the positive points. I think one of the biggest ones, and this is the special edition I'm on here, well, I get those Maxxis Zilla tires. Those things really are good. In the mud, you just feel like you have tons of control. On pavement or on hard packed gravel, you start to feel a little kind of loose because you're sitting up on those huge paddles. But the second you get into any soft terrain, I have to give these tires a massive amount of credit. Uh, and then the next thing which I think has to be mentioned in this comparison is Yamaha's reputation for reliability. I think it's well earned. I don't think it's just out there and not actually true. Um, and, and one of the things that backs it up is their 10 year belt warranty. If you break a belt in this machine anywhere in your first 10 years of ownership, Yamaha will replace that belt. That's definitely not happening over at Can-Am. So those are real positives here. Now, talking about the riding experience, the Grizzly is good, but you have to just look at Yamaha's philosophy. They basically have decided they have a good thing, don't change it, just leave it alone. And that's okay for some people, but if you want kind of the best of the best, the cutting edge technology, a brand that's pushing the limits, it's not Yamaha. This Grizzly has enough power. I won't say it feels crazy powerful, but it does feel like it has enough power for the package. The handling is okay. I think the biggest difference I felt on the trail was suspension. The suspension here in the Grizzly, you can just find the limits really easily. You're coming through a corner, you feel the whole machine kind of lean over, and then let's say you hit a root in the middle of that corner, well the suspension is already maxed out, so then the whole machine kind of jumps sideways and you really gotta ride it. That's what I felt, coming through the same aggressive corners on the Grizzly, I was using my body weight to really physically get this thing to do what I wanted it to do. And now the other thing I wanna talk about is the ergonomics. Uh, I do love the storage. I do have this storage between my legs and then this big threaded storage over here. The threaded is nice because that really should be waterproof. And this is actually a little bit more storage 
at hand anyways than what you have over there on the Can-Am. Um, ergonomics, I sit on here okay. I have enough room for my legs. The strange thing I'm now feeling on the Grizzly is how tight the handlebars are and how they're almost angled back towards me. So riding hard, I feel like my hands are in tight to my body. Um, whereas on the Can-Am, they're a little wider and I felt like I preferred that. It gave me a little bit more confidence going through some of those corners rather than this little tight setup. So overall, I mean, Grizz is still a solid machine. All right, folks, time for the top speed run here on the Grizzly. I'm in four wheel drive on an empty gravel road. Let's see what I got. Taking off in three, two, one. I saw 100 kilometers per hour. Now, if I had more runway, I could have maybe squeezed a little bit more out of it, but that pretty much felt like the top. 100 kilometers an hour, that's 62 miles per hour. And now top speed here on the Outlander XT700. We'll also try and do a zero to 60 number for you guys. And same thing, I'm on here on the same empty road. I'm gonna pin it. Let's see what we get out of it. Here we go, taking off in three, two, one, go! you saw it there what can i say the can-am does everything a little better it hit so hard off the line that when you pin it the front wheels wanted to lift so right there i had to actually back out of it real quick and then get back into it but straight up it hits harder right off the line than that yamaha does and then you saw it i got a bit more top speed i saw about 105 kilometers an hour and it got up to that top speed quicker than the yamaha as well and here I am on this XT700. Now the XT700 in the lineup, of course, 700 is the larger engine option. And then XT brings along a whole bunch of kind of sport focused features to make this thing look a little better, give it a little bit more style and then make it handle well on the trail. And again, just sitting here, that's the first thing I'll talk about ergonomics. I actually have more knee room here. The seat's a little bit skinnier. That's maybe a personal preference thing. Uh, the Yamaha, maybe a little cushier, but this right away feels more aggressive. It feels like the kind of machine where, yeah, I can grab onto it with my knees and then I'm gonna be riding it. Um, the other thing is the seat height. The seat height has been raised quite a bit on this generation of Outlander and it makes it simple to stand up. Not that I can't stand up on the Grizzly, but this is definitely a little bit easier on the Can-Am thanks to that higher seat height. At hand storage, I do have a cell phone holder which has a little magnetic clip so you can actually, you know, magnetize your cell phone right in there to the back of this holder. That's kind of cool. And then a little at hand storage and two USB ports so you can actually charge stuff. So let's talk about power. This is the brand new 650 cc power plant. Now Can-Am will sell it as either a 500 or a 700. And the main difference is the ECU tuning, but there's also a performance camshaft you have to get to step up to the 700. So it's not just a computerized difference. Um, so straight up, these have the exact same amount of horsepower on paper but the Can-Am gets it to the ground better. It takes off harder off the line. It has more power in the mid range. Everything about this power plant just feels more robust. And that's actually kind of funny when you consider that the Yamaha is a 686 cc single cylinder, and this is just a 650 cc single cylinder. So I don't know if it's just the actual engine themselves, or maybe it has a lot more to do with the clutching and uh, how Can-Am uses its new P drive system in the clutch, either way, Power-wise, it's XT700 all day. Now on this model, I have those XPS Trail King tires. Uh, not quite as kind of aggressive for the mud as the Yamaha is, but these are more of an all-rounder. So once we were on the hard-packed gravel or out on the road, 
this machine felt better sorted for all situations. However, in the deep mud, I will give the nod to the Yamaha. Again, it's all about tires, but uh, yeah, those Zillas made a big difference. Now, when it comes time for just sporty handling, again, it's Can-Am all the way. I have more travel. I don't know how well you could even just see me doing that, but it just feels like sitting here. The suspension is just supple. It's ready to soak stuff up. Uh, and that just means less riding that I have to do as a rider and more that the machine can accomplish by itself. And that is A, it's a little bit more fun just because you don't feel like you're wrestling your machine to get it to do what you want to do. But B, it's less fatiguing. So after a long day on the trails, the Grizzly rider, yeah, you're going to be more tired because you've been really riding that thing. You get here on the Can-Am and you don't have that same experience. The machine does more for you. Therefore, you should be a little less tired at the end of the day. Uh, a couple more settings I'll talk about. First of all, on the Grizzly, we have a rear locked differential and then the front diff, you can lock it yourself. Here on the Can-Am, the front differential is the Visco lock auto locking differential. So essentially once one wheel starts to spin, there's actually this thick viscous fluid in there. I think it's some kind of oil. And as one wheel starts to spin, that oil kind of binds up inside of the differential and that's what sends power to the other side. It's an interesting system. Um, these things are always up for debate. I like the auto locker because it's automatic. You just go and it does its own thing. However, I do also believe that if you really want the best possible off-road um, scenario, you want to be locked up before you get into the situation rather than letting the machine spin one tire and then locking up. So I do prefer, I think, the Yamaha system, but I also like the auto locking differential. And in the stuff we've been doing around here, it's been working great. One other thing here on the XT700, I actually get to change my power steering setting. There's a low, a mid, and a max. Me personally, I like it on low. I like to have as much feedback as possible, but I think, again, the more important point here is you have a choice. Over on the Yamaha, you don't get a choice with power steering. In my opinion, it's a little on the lighter side. I'd like a little more feedback out of the Grizzly, but then I mentioned it, then you're gonna be even more tired riding that thing. So the engineers at Yamaha, they pick how they want the power steering to be and you have to deal with it. Here at Can-Am, they give you choices and more choices is always better in my book. We are coming to the end of this one, but the last number I have to compare is the price. So over here, this Yamaha Grizzly EPS Special Edition here in Canada sells for $15,000, and that doesn't include all of the accessories that you see in this video. So 15 grand for just that base ATV. Over here on this XT700, we're talking about $12,000 here in Canada. So you've heard my thoughts on how they handle. You know I just think the Can-Am is a better machine out there on the trail. Combine that with the fact that it's less expensive. And yes, I have to say the winner of this comparison is this brand new Outlander. But of course, now I want to hear from you. So please go into the comments. Let me know what you think of both of these ATVs. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of TK Power Sports, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.